It's easy to forget how awful compact 4x4s were before the original Toyota RAV4 first appeared. This car raised the standard and in improved third generation guise still has plenty to offer in this sector thanks to a practical interior and low running costs now matched to smarter looks and stronger engines. Think of a small, sporty and relatively affordable SUV and you're probably thinking of this one, Toyota's RAV4. Since this recreational activity vehicle was first launched in 1994, it's redefined its market sector, gaining over three quarters of a million sales worldwide and spawning a whole host of imitators. But time moves on. Is there still a volume place for this car in a market sector full of new arrivals, each claiming a slightly different spin on the philosophy that this RAV4 defined in the first place? To prove that there is, Toyota has made significant revisions to its third generation model, um, mainly under the bonnet. With most compact SUV sales being of diesel variants, uh, the original 2006 Mark III RAV4 model's offering was surprisingly muddled in this respect. Its two engines offered respectively either too much or too little power, and neither gave buyers the automatic gearbox option that many of them wanted. These days, this single powerful D4 D150 variant can be ordered with an automatic gearbox, and Toyota's eco-friendly optimal drive technology is on offer to both petrol and diesel buyers. As a result, potential customers are less likely to pass up on this car's other virtues. But is the original still the best? Let's find out. Now, it isn't such a shock these days to climb aboard a compact 4x4 and find yourself at the helm of something that handles pretty much like any other family hatch, yet still offers you that 20 centimetres higher elevated driving position. Back in 1994, when this car first hit the streets, it was a revelation. People didn't care that it was useless for anything other than a rutted farm track. For them, the RAV4 was the cake and eat it 4x4. The car the term soft roader was first coined for. Today it's not quite as sharp in the twisties as say a Ford Cougar, but it still changes direction keenly enough to surprise you if you're not familiar with this class of car. Impressive for something weighing over 1600 kilograms. Now uh, it's not perfect of course and the light and slightly vague steering is less of an issue around town where you appreciate the great all-round visibility and the tight 10.2 meter turning circle. Now both of the main engines on offer are recently developed ones borrowed from Toyota's Mondeo sized Avensis with the minority choice being the entry level 2 litre VVTi petrol unit. Now it has a healthy 156 brake horsepower to draw upon but its 198 newton meters of torque won't appeal to 4x4 drivers used to the low end muscle of a good diesel. For them, Toyota has ditched the 134 and 175 brake horsepower D4D diesels uh, originally used by this third generation RAV4 and replaced them with a single 148 brake horsepower 2.2 litre D4D unit. That's the engine that I'm driving here. Now with a meaty 340 newton meters of torque, this is much more the sort of thing that you expect to pay close to £25,000 for, especially when it's equipped with the optional six-speed multi-drive S CVT automatic gearbox. Toyota's RAV4 range caters both for the customer who needs no all-wheel drive ability at all, with a two-wheel drive petrol model, as well as for those who want to uh, tow, uh, get out of muddy car parks or survive the odd February icy snap and therefore want the peace of mind of four-wheel drive. Now for the latter group, Toyota has engineered an active torque split system which can if necessary send up to 45% of uh, power to the rear wheels but more, more usually sends 100% uh, of power to those at the front for uh, improved tarmac economy. If you are off the beaten track there's a switch here that can lock the vehicle into four-wheel drive at speeds of up to 25 miles an hour and Toyota have also engineered in hill start and downhill assist controls. But don't expect any hardcore features like a low range gearbox, horses for courses and all that. 
It isn't only people who grow up and become more mature. From being cutting edge and funky when it first appeared in the 90s, today's RAV4 has become a more family orientated and practical choice, pitched towards the pricier end of the compact 4x4 market. Not that it doesn't still have its own clean, distinctive look, emphasised by recent tweaks that have brought us mildly restyled rear and front lights, uh, side indicators incorporated into the mirrors, and a revised front grille. Inside, once uh, you're ensconced in that commanding driving position, there's ample head, leg and elbow room, provided you're carrying only four adults. Everything falls neatly to hand, the steering wheel feels good to hold, and there's a real quality feel about the controls. Now, as with the outside, there are mild changes to the cabin decor of this improved RAV4 that I'm looking at here. But what I'd rather tell you about is this MPV-style flexibility that you get in this super clever rear seating system. Now, there are a few cars of this type that can offer uh, rear seats that recline backwards for extra comfort on long journeys and or offer rear seats that slide backwards and forwards, in this case by up to 165 millimetres, so that you can choose between prioritising uh, rear legroom or back luggage space. There are also a few where these rear seats fold properly flush to create a really usable loading space. What's different here though is that the whole process is so darn simple. No hernias involved in pushing everything into position, no fiddly headdress to dismantle, just a single one-touch operation, pulling the handle here, that sees the back of the seat disappear flush with the load bay floor to boost uh, luggage space from 586 to 1469 litres. That's one of the biggest load bays in the class. Only the side-hinged rear door is frustrating, being awkward in tight spaces and failing to open quite to 90 degrees. Still, maybe the designers were too busy figuring out where people were going to store all their odds and ends. There are two underfloor compartments at the back here. There's a shallow one at the front of the uh, rear luggage space and just behind it a deeper one for uh, bigger odds and ends, plus all kinds of extra storage compartments dotted around the interior. List prices suggest that you'll pay from just under 20,000 to just over 25,000 pounds for your RAV4, with the, the entry-level two-wheel drive petrol model offering a tempting saving of nearly 4,000 pounds over the four-wheel drive D4D. Now, overall, this pricing puts this Toyota plumb in the middle of the compact SUV sector against cars like Nissan's X-Trail and uh, Honda's CR-V. So, is it good value? Well, you could pay more if you need a little extra off-road ability and get a Land Rover Freelander, or if you don't mind a slightly cruder on-road driving experience, you could save a bit and get a Suzuki Grand Vitara. But for most buyers, most of the time, this RAV4 is just about right. If your budget is a bit tighter, you uh, want a Toyota and you don't mind something slightly smaller with a dash more attitude, then you could also consider their urban cruiser model. Whether you go for a two or four wheel drive petrol RAV4 variant or the D4D diesel, there's only a five door body style on offer these days, but you do at least now get the choice of a decent automatic transmission option with both engines go for two-wheel drive and it's only a petrol manual choice. What isn't optional in such a tightly fought corner of the market is a decent level of standard kit, which is why all RAV4s come with dual zone climate control, auto lights and wipers, power heated mirrors, electric windows all round, Bluetooth phone compatibility, a six CD stereo and alloy wheels. Now safety is accounted for by up to nine airbags, including a driver's knee airbag, uh, you also get a stability control system that helps you out if you enter a corner too fast or if you're driving on icy roads. There are anti-whiplash head restraints and there are also ISA fixed child seat mountings for the back seats. Now this particular RAV4 is intent on combating the idea that all SUV vehicles are bad for the environment and it has Toyota's optimal drive technology as its not so secret weapon. Now this encompasses a whole host of eco-friendly engineering improvements that contribute to a couple of very efficient engines. 
the 2.2-litre uh, D4D uh, unit that I'm driving here manages 48.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. And thanks to its clever DCAT catalytic converter, puts out 154 grams of CO2. The 2-litre petrol version, meanwhile, achieves 37.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 177 grams per kilometre of CO2. And that's even if you go for the four-wheel drive version with the multi-drive S uh, CVT automatic gearbox. With, and there are marginal improvements, of course, if you uh, choose the petrol two-wheel drive manual version. Um, what else do you need to know? Well, residual values are very good. Uh, insurance is Group 10 for the petrols and Group 12 for the diesels. And um, servicing is required every 12 months or 10,000 miles with major work required only every other year. Toyota's RAV4 still has plenty of say over sales in the tarmac orientated compact SUV sector. It originated all those years ago. Now, uh, the most recent improvements are timely, but there are still rivals that better it on or off-road. Few, though, provide a stronger compromise between the two, and none can better its unimpeachable build quality and the strong residual values that have become a RAV4 trademark. Now, those aren't very SUV-like virtues, but then neither were limpet-like road holding and family car standards of ride and refinement before this model first hit the scene. This Toyota may have matured over the years along with stronger, more improved engines, but its buying proposition still makes family-friendly real-world sense.